Welcome to the Biblical Entrepreneurship Community Podcast. I'm your host, Patrice Sager. I'm here. Art is back with Art. I've got my Thin Plan t-shirt. Art, by the way, I, I love these. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there is. Wait a minute. I don't wait. have my Timothy Plan shirt on, man. The first time. And here I am on your show. <laughs> you know, um, man, these are, you know, Art, I've had this for over five years. And they still look new. I mean, the quality is incredible. So you got to bring these back, man. Patrice, one of my other favorites saying was that it only costs a little more <laughs> to go for a class. <laughs> I love it. This yeah. is good. so Art and I. We we having a conversation about Art's book, uh, uh, Biblical Responsibility, <laughs> Invested with Purpose. There you go. Um, the high he pioneered the space called Biblical Responsible Investing. Uh, and 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 the and we're going we're taking chapter per chapter as we really get into each of those sections today. We're going to focus on Art's favorite saying: "Obedience trumps performance." I want to read a scripture that actually uh, leads in that start that kicks off that particular chapter, and it's First uh, Samuel fifteen, chapter fifteen, verse one to be to obey is better than sacrifice. This is where. Uh, Samuel, the prophet Samuel, was talking to Saul when he fell out of favor with God. Our, I mean, biblical scholars, those who know scripture, knows the consequences that Saul faced when, when, the, when the prophet made that statement to him. Hmm. That's been your mantra. Were you inspired by that scripture or does it kind of all on? I mean, that's been your mantra. He lost the kingdom as because of that. Well, it wasn't that particular scripture. The whole of scripture makes it very clear, Patrice. Obedience is what God expects of us. And um, what, did, what did Jesus say? If you fast forward to you know, New Testament times, if you love me, you will what? Obey my commandments. And, you know, one of the big problems I see in Christianity today, and people say, ah, you're too critical. Well, I'm just observant, I think, is there's way too much lip service going on in the body of Christ. And I don't think that pleases the Lord. He expects uh, actual performance, not just lip service, uh, good intentions. Um, but anyway, uh, can I correct something you started with? Yes, sir. You know, you say I was a pioneer. Of that. No, I wasn't. I was just the guy that the Lord used that had that two by four with my name on it. And he kept whacking me. All right. All right. I'll do it. Uh, but uh, clearly, Christ is the chairman of our board. Uh, we try to and, and we're committed to honor him in everything we do. So it's not me. This is if it wasn't me, it would have been he to use maybe you. Um, you're one of our trustees. You may have used you with that two by four. And I, I would have voted for that at the time. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to correct that. Well said. But Art, this is this is hard work. Uh, the, this, the chapter opens uh, with, with, with this statement. Investing with purpose requires complete obedience, not partial. And if anybody that knows Art, <laughs> Art <laughs> is no fan of partial obedience. Uh, uh, you imagine growing up in Art's household, his children. Uh, no one ever made a real difference while with without giving themselves entirely to their convictions and following through to the end, no matter the cause. Art relates how God steered him towards his calling. Art, um, you 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 didn't grow up in a Christian household, and you came to faith later. You were you know kind of um, religious, but you got convicted, and you came all the way in. Um, if you think back at, you know, even when you were all the way in and and kind of walking in the faith, you and Bonnie, you, I mean, your children say so you guys went through a drastic 360 degree change. I mean, you, even that was before the mythic. So let's just talk about being obedient to the faith. I mean, you just made a statement earlier. How critical is that? People who are watching and listening, they say, I want to be like Art Alley. I want, I want my life to be invested in purpose. I want to make sure that my life counts. You know, you, you and Bounty made some decisions early that was drastic in your personal lives 
to just obey fully what God can your life. This is before Timothy. How important was that a foundation to what God laid our country called you to do? You know, uh, to put the record straight, it was not a flash of lightning, a 360 degree turnaround. I wasn't any of that. And I think most people can relate. It is a journey. It was a gradual journey. Uh, very few people leave their old self behind instantly and instantly become obedient. In fact, we're never going to be fully obedient until we get to heaven. Uh, so it's more a journey, Patrice, than it was just a 360-degree uh, turnaround. Uh, so in full disclosure, you know, it, uh, we have been on this journey for a long time. Uh, but you're right. I, I did not grow up in a Christian household. Uh, my father immigrated here from what used to be known as Palestine, is now known as Israel. Uh, he was brought up as a Muslim. Muslims, in one way, put Christians to shame. Because when he grew up, and you know this, Patrice, uh, they almost 24-7 were required as children to memorize their holy book, the Koran. Um, I mean, that was their version of truth. Now, my father never really fully accepted that. But compare that with the average Christian today who has a little trouble repeating John 3.16. I mean, if we would absorb God's word, it is our guidebook. Uh, but we get really careless on that and we pay more attention to the world and we want to be liked by the world. And, you know, Jesus made it very clear, not that we're to be obnoxious and not likable, but the world's not going to like us if they're on the dark side. But that is no reason to compromise and, and blend with them. And I think that's another problem in the church today. The church used to be the guardian of the culture. They were the standard. And it seems these days, Patrice, the church in an effort as sincere as it might be to be liked have incorporated the world into the church instead of the other way around. Uh, it, it, it's a big problem today, and I don't think the Lord is pleased with that, uh, but I don't pretend to know his mind. With that, uh, Christy, good having you. Christy says she's listening. Uh, by the way, Christy, Art Alley is the founder and CEO of, of the Timothy Plan. Again, uh, we have the, if you, anyone wants to know more about the Timothy Plan, the company, uh, a biblically-based uh, uh, Christian um, mutual fund, uh, that ensures that none of your money, zero, not a penny, uh, goes is invested in anything that is inconsistent with God's word, such as pornography, tobacco, and the list goes on and on. If you've not been following this podcast, you can go to our blog and look at the other podcasts that we've done on this particular story. So, Art, um, when the Lord uh, speaks to your heart about uh, moving in this direction, you you are at that point you have a successful practice called covenant financial management uh, yes. in business we call it an opportunity cost there's a huge opportunity cost for you for pursuing this direction talk to us a bit about that in terms of you, you, you get this call and you have to you have a successful practice and going the direction <laughs> i mean i mean it could it could compromise your, your career so obedience from performance you've got to obey how did you process right. that and leaving behind what you were doing, or at least transitioning from that? Well, uh, you're right, Patrice. I mean, I did have a nice financial planning practice, primarily with the Christian community. But I was also active in battling some of the evils in our culture, abortion, pornography. And I became increasingly aware that I'm helping my Christian clients invest the money that they would all testify is really God's, and I'm going to do it his way. Uh, invest in uh, funds and, and various vehicles that would own shares of companies that were funding our destruction, whether it's abortion, pornography, anti-family entertainment, or any of the rest of the things. And it made no sense. 
so I really did get convicted. Uh, we need, I searched the entire investment industry for anybody that was properly screening on biblical principles and nobody was. So that's where I learned one of my valuable lessons in life. Uh, and that is what R and D really mean. People think research and development. It took two years to put this together. But the real meaning from my experience of R and D is all out go and no income. Now, so, you know, my son, uh, Stephen, thankfully, was working with me in the practice and he kind of kept it going as uh, I went off on this tangent um, to really put together what's become known as the Timothy Plan Family of Mutual Funds today. Wow. Let's talk about that, Art. So because entrepreneurs are watching this, Christy is an entrepreneur and, and they themselves are trying to be obedient to God's call and the business that God called them to do. So it's your son uh, and, and Timothy and uh, uh, he's not with us t today. He's with the Lord now. Oh, he's home. Man. He was yeah. instrumental in this. I mean, because so you needed him to kind of run your traditional practice while you pursue this wholeheartedly. Without that, I mean, it would have been difficult. Would you agree? Well, it would have been, but you know, we had responsibilities to our clients. So I couldn't just walk away and leave them dangling for a couple of years. So it was more uh, providing the service wow. uh, than worrying about the income. Wow. But you know, if any entrepreneur out there really gets convicted to do it God's way, I mean, that's where the leap of faith and tenacity and sticking to it comes from because, you know, as we said, I think on the podcast before, we know we can trust God. The problem is, can he trust us? And he has a, a, a sense of humor in the way he proves that. And I call it being jammed through keyholes uh, or taken through the fire. It's how you come out on the other end that, that really demonstrates that he can trust you. And so I have to figure, well, he jammed me through keyhole number one. Yeah, you can trust him. No, he couldn't. It took two keyholes and then three and then four uh, before he finally uh, was satisfied. I guess I'm going to come out okay the other end. Uh, I, love it. I love that statement. We can trust God. But the question yeah. is not that. Can he trust us yes, sir. to be obedient all the way? Aren't you have to raise a million dollars to get this thing going? I did. So <laughs> So you would think if this is God's thing, that he will make that fundraising easy, right? I mean, so uh, you know how to raise a million, but then you had to raise more money later on. So how, so talk to us a bit about that. So you had to raise the money. How easy did that first million come? And then how difficult was the rest of the money down the line? Oh, it was real easy, Patrice. When I started doing it, I had a lot of contacts, a lot of good friends, solid Christians that had the wherewithal to make an initial investment of $50,000 without it impacting their life at all. So I made a list of 50 of these people, 50. And I figured, well, this is gonna be easy. I only need 20 of them to invest, right? And uh, as you and I have discussed in the past, uh, when I started talking to them about this, uh, I got a real education because 20 did not invest. Three, only three of that list of 50 stepped wow. up, uh, committed to the 50,000, and that left me a big hole. So it took six months longer than I, intent than I thought it was going to take to raise the initial capital. But during that six months, God led me to people I had no way of knowing. Uh, I mean, it was just an incredible journey who actually ended up making up the initial uh, partnership group that, that uh, funded this with the million dollars. Uh, so I can take zero credit for any of this. Uh, and that's when, when I started figuring out, you know, I only thought I knew who I wanted to be part of this initial uh, partnership group, but I didn't. God knew. And that's a, another 
uh, thing that we really need to come to grips with. If he really is in control, and he is, if we really recognize he is control in control, then you take the setbacks and understand, you know, what's he trying to teach me now? What's going on? Uh, if he's not in control, then you better figure out what he wants you to do and go do that. Uh, but he is uh, in control. And that, that was lesson number one. He knew who he wanted to be part of this. And looking back, my list would have been a disaster if some of these people had stepped up because they weren't fully on board as I had thought they were. Mm. Uh, so it was quite a journey, Patrice. And that's an important point because your investor, including you and your wife, had to wait a long time to see a return. You finally turned a profit, so you needed people who truly were called with you. <laughs> this, is, this is true. Uh, we got a great group of, of initial partners. Uh, the million dollars was quite adequate, according uh, to my uh, forecast. I'm, I'm a spreadsheet guy, and I know how to do uh, forecasts, and I know how to do all that. And, and I did a pretty good job of that, frankly. But the one uh, element that didn't work out quite as well was the rate of growth of the assets in the fund, which produced the revenue to cover some of the expenses. This is a very expensive enterprise, and the people did not beat a path to our door. They weren't thinking in these terms, not that they didn't care. They just weren't thinking like that. And it took uh, a long time. We actually, uh, the expenses drained the million, which was, when, when I saw that was gone, wow. that was the most excruciating day of my life. And, you know, I didn't know. These people trusted me with a million dollars. It was gone, not because we mismanaged it. It's just it didn't grow in spite of all our efforts as quickly as we thought it would. Um, but God stepped in. He gave me a, a plan. We went back to some of the partners. And, you know, some of them stepped up. Some of them did not. Uh, and then we ran out of money a second time. I didn't raise a million the second time. But we ran out of that because we still didn't grow quite as quickly as it would have taken to get to the break-even point. Ran out of money a third time. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you're, not, you're asking me about all this. Uh, I'm going maybe further than you want me to. No, no, this is good. This uh, is good. You know, uh, God led me to people I had no way of knowing again who stepped up and almost insisted on investing in the ownership group. Uh, well, we were running out of money, ran out the fourth time. And that was about it. This was eight years of this. And when we ran out the fourth time, by then I got it. I got it. I, you know, I knew he was going to do something and darned if he didn't. But he always does it. Uh, I don't know, Patrice, you know this to be true in your ministry. About the 11th hour, you know, he kind of waits. Uh, but once we got that final funding in, then I believe he knew he could trust us. And the, the funds kind of started growing rapidly enough where we were covering the expenses and we never looked back. We've never run out of money again. But in this business, you run out of money, the Securities and Exchange Commission will shut you down. They have stringent requirements. And we were on that razor edge for eight years, but he carried us through. Uh, and man, what a, I wouldn't want to repeat that ever again, but if I had to, I guess I would. Uh, but if you're thinking of doing something and the Lord is going to be the chairman of it, it is not going to be a rose garden. Uh, and it shouldn't be because you've got to be able to weather the storm and know that he is in control, you know, and Patrice, we're going through that right now. If I can, do you mind if I take a little deep? Go ahead, go ahead, Art. So we've got, I mean, I've got, you know, I don't know, we've got probably 60, 70,000 shareholders and I've got friends around and they're all agonizing over this election. And uh, not that they shouldn't. I mean, uh, it was a massive landslide for Donald Trump. 
uh, as president. And I'm not trying to be political. I'm just looking at what happened. And they've got all the evidence in the world that showed massive vote fraud just kept coming in until Biden was declared the winner. Uh, now, I'm not going to like it if the Marxist leading people take over America, but they shouldn't take over on total corruption and fraud. We're not a third world country. Uh, but nevertheless, even if they do, our security and sense of well being is not in the elected officials in Washington, D.C., who are going to make us like the rest of the world, really. Uh, the anchor holds. Christ is the anchor. God is in control of all of this. And our faithfulness in him will carry us through no matter what happens. You know, one way I won't like it much, the other way I'll be much happier. Nevertheless, the anchor holds. Amen. End of sermon for today on that. But please be encouraged. Wow, we're talking to Art Alley, the author of Investable Purpose. Art is the CEO and president of the Finity Plan, a biblically responsible mutual fund based out of Orlando, Florida. Uh, we're talking about obedience truck performance. As entrepreneurs, you can all relate to what Art just shared about the importance of obedience. Art, you were one of those angels that God sent into my life um, that changed everything for me. Uh, and And just as others came into your life. You did it for me. You kind of, and it's just been amazing. I want to public just say thank you again, because, you know, you came into my life and God literally used you to open up. Matter of fact, one of our major uh, donors now who has really been championing us because of you, you met him. And not only have you invested in us, you were that person that came in that we had no clue we would meet, open up the, the, the nation to us, but also have strategically connected us with people who's been very helpful to us along the way. So I know that this works as you obey the Lord and what he's called you to do. He will introduce people to you like art and others who will just open up doors for you, but you got to stay obedient. Art, in your book, you state here that, it, so in after two years of research, you mentioned that in, in March 1994, uh, Timothy Plan is, 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 uh, is launched at completely out of obedience. Then uh, this, the, this, this, <laughs> a, a quote is made here, not a penny. Uh, now, if you've bought the book, uh, you will see that on the cover of the book is actually Art's son holding Grand, a penny. Grandson. Grandson, I'm sorry, grandson holding a penny. And the penny that he's holding is actually of the year that the company was born. And that symbolizes exactly the position of Timothy, that zero, not a penny will be invested. But Art... Everybody didn't think you were going to make it. Here's what your book says. Uh, our arrival was not met with universal, universal enthusiasm. This fund may have gone too far. Some say it sounds like someone is trying to preach the convert and then setting up a big collection. Mutual fund analyst Michael Lipper said for the Bloomberg News. You say your Wall Street friends all cautioned you um, that, that what you're about to do was impossible. You can't do that. You cannot exclude investing in some of the most profitable companies and expect to get a return, they said. And your answer to them was in God's economy, obedience trumps performance every time. Art, right, take us back, 1994. Let's go back to that moment in time. You're making this statement. You have no clue, in fact, that this is going to work, but you have all the conviction in the world. Fast forward, you're not one point plus billion dollars as a fund. You're profitable. You've impacted many ministries. Go back to that moment, Art, seeing what you see now. What are your thoughts? Well, my first thought, Patrice, I don't want to go back to that moment because it was a little painful. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of in half jest only, I use the story of the two by four, you know, the Lord really, I knew he wanted this to be done. Uh, and Bonnie, my wife, knew that we should do this no matter what. We were a lot younger at the time uh, and we just went forward. Uh, we tried to do it carefully, but as I mentioned, you know, our uh, responsibility is to honor Christ in every way that we can. And here we are struggling uh, with a, a very slow growth curve. 
but our marketing material rivaled that of, I used to say Merrill Lynch, but any other big firm, it was first quality. And, uh, you know, I have my daughter, Cheryl, to thank for that. Uh, she's very creative, but we were committed to be uh, uh, absolutely uh, top drawer, first quality, first class in everything we did. And one of the things that has troubled me over the years is to see people that are wearing, for lack of a better term, Christ on their shirt sleeve. And they do things in a careless manner. That doesn't honor him. They do things on the cheap. That doesn't honor him. Uh, not that you're a bad steward and, and go way overboard, but you should absolutely honor him from the marketing material, to every relationship you have, to every contract you sign, to everything uh, you do. And so from the get-go, we were committed to excellence, Patrice. And I think we've honored, I know we've honored that over the years. Wow. And being one of the trustees at Timothy, this is one thing I've learned from you. You gave me a privilege. I'm one of the youngest trustees on your board. Now, you don't have to keep reminding me of that one, but go ahead. <laughs> you gave me a privilege to sit right there where the where the sauce is made and to and it's been a learning lesson for me watching you are uh every time zero compromise uh nothing but quality both from the uh the, from the money managers uh to where you take the trustees to how you handle as trustees to the quality of trustees um to your office at, at, at all levels uh and so our because the perception oftentimes as a christian company who's fully devoted it's kind of cheesy uh you know it's kind of but so you you kind of turned that perception around as a matter of fact uh timothy inspired me and us at nema project to, to stay out there now uh it's it's, a, it's not a cheap path uh but it does pays off because people perceive Christian, we say biblical entrepreneurship, you say biblical investing, the perception of biblical is often not quality. Right. And that's bad. Yeah. Now, go ahead. Yeah, with that, Art, so let me ask you this. So early on, you, you kind of focus on five core, which was abortion, pornography, alcohol, tobacco, casino gambling, and later on, it evolves to more and more. So which means that the screen, which is the secret sauce, I call you an inventor. You don't like that term, but I, I think you invented, I mean, that's, that's innovation. So that screen, that innovation, that was kind of the secret, that's the secret sauce of this whole process. So what kind of gave you the idea of the screen and what to put on the screen? Did you kind of go through scripture, identify things that God doesn't like, or what? how did that secret sauce come about? Well, uh, you just said it yourself. I mean, we are a biblically responsible mutual fund. That means a lot of things. And the screens are the core part, as you said, of what we do. Um, the the uh, Bible is very clear. And, and I try to make it clear to other people that call and say, oh, you won't, your uh, funds only invest in quote unquote good companies. Well, that's not true. I mean, the money managers decide who's the best uh, prospects for investing and and they pick and choose who to invest in. But if you're a biblically responsible family of funds, uh, the Bible is very clear. There is none righteous, not one. And the only way I know how to explain how we handle our screens is once you do the research, once you dig in, see what these companies are really doing beneath the radar. And we've got a team of five full-time people that do nothing but that. Um, once you understand that, uh, that there's none righteous, there is a line that I describe for lack of a better term uh, that determines whether we refuse to own shares in the companies or uh, the rest of the world is open to our money management firms. The line is simply that there, you can tell when you're sitting doing the research, there is a difference between companies that are passively unrighteous 
and those who are pursuing an unholy agenda. Those are the ones we refuse to own, no matter how good they look economically. Uh, so that's kind of the, the strategy we use in our screening. <clears throat> uh, I should bring all the trustees in, and you're one of 12 of us that meet quarterly. And they hold my feet to the fire. But I think you'd agree they're one of the greatest group of people that uh, we could possibly assemble uh, of all kinds of skills and talents and backgrounds. But if I were to bring you in and let you go through the documented files of what these companies uh, are actually doing, uh, invisible to the average uh, Christian investor, uh, you, would, you would get sick because they, they, it's very clear the ones pursuing an unholy agenda and we are not going to own that. Wow, I love it. Hey, if you want to know more about these screens and and about some of the ways <clears throat> I think we operate, go, visit, go visit their website, timothyplan.com. Yeah. Timothyplan.com. There they have a tool called the evaluator, which helps the screening. As a matter of fact, you can even have them evaluate your investments where it is right now without even doing anything, just have them evaluate. So you can see for yourself where your investments are in. And at that moment, you can make a decision whether to stay, I hate to pass judgment, disobedient or be obedient, right? <laughs> you know, that's kind of, all right, uh, my last question to you and then we'll bring it to wrap because I know we've taken much of your time. So obedience, trust, trunk performance, that's a reference to the investment world. So, so far we've talked about the importance of obedience, doing what God has said, period. Let's talk about the performance <laughs> part of this as we wrap up. So that statement made a lot of sense because you're talking to investors. So I want to wrap up with that. So the assumption that one could make is that Art made this statement to justify low performance by Timothy. That's what it, you know, people who are in this thing may, may think. But could you clarify that? Because, because Timothy is, is, is nothing low performance about it. But talk about the importance of obedience though you may have performance and watching performance happen because of obedience because you balance those two so that investors watching or or financial planners watching they don't think oh that's just a cap out that's the using sure. yeah go ahead sure um yeah uh, you know obedience does trump performance but that does not mean we don't get good performance and the key to good performance, and we're very conservative, all of our funds uh, are very conservatively managed. We're not cowboys. We don't believe in uh, playing. It's not a game we play. We're, we, we invest in really solid companies. But we don't make those decisions. Our decisions, and the board is uh, an integral part of this, is finding top tier, best of class, money, well, well, foundational money management uh, firms to actually manage every one of our funds. So they're outside money management firms that manage Timothy plan portfolios, just like they manage all their other institutional clients. The difference for us is they cannot invest in any company that fails our screens. Uh, so the real, um, key to performance isn't so much compromise and say, okay, well, God will understand if I invest in this. Uh, the real key to long-term performance is solid money management, skilled firms that are top of class. And we were blessed with every one of those in every one of our funds. And the trustees oversee that process every quarter. Right, Patrice? Yes, we, we just did it last uh, <laughs> last week. As a matter of fact, uh, our, uh, some of the money managers called uh, the Timothy plan, uh, you know, God's fund. <laughs> well, they do. And, and, you know, we got great relationships because we also honor him in, in all the way we perform. I mean, we have to pay the money managers. They get paid instantly. We don't, we don't sit there and drag any of that out. Uh, they know we're sincere in what we do. We're not trying to sit here and be judgmental or any of the rest of the stuff. And we're not wearing a fish on our shirt sleeve. This is what we do. And they appreciate that. Uh, and they manage billions and billions and billions of dollars. 
But in every case, I think I can say that we are their favorite client because they appreciate what we do and they see the value of what we do. And if I can add a, a closing comment, uh, my friend Kevin Freeman addressed our trustees and you were there at the time, Patrice, a couple of years ago. And, you know, this guy, I mean, he is an expert. We lost Art for a minute there. Um, I'm talking to Art Alley of the Timothy Brian. Uh, production team, let me know when Art comes back. We I'm talk. Back. Uh, there he is. Art, yeah. can you go ahead. Yeah, Kevin Freeman. Can we do that? I mean, did I lose you? I'm here. Um, Kevin but Freeman. Kevin Freeman made a profound statement that hadn't even occurred to me. And he said this to our trustees. He said, why I love Timothy is because unless it is God's money, you can debate that until you're blue in the face. But I mean, you're going, you got the right to be wrong. It's his money, what he entrusts uh, you with. He says, unless you're carefully screening out how you invest God's money, you could inadvertently be funding your own destruction. Wow. I said, wow. You know, that was uh, a Kevin Freeman line, and that stuck with me all these years. Wow. Uh, but our performance, the key to it, good money management uh, firms, and we've got them. Uh, our key to the biblically responsible side of it is we do not compromise. We could have been much larger had we compromised, and there are some out there that maybe are doing some of that. We won't, uh, and it's not because we're judgmental. We just believe God, and his word is very clear. How much money do you want to invest? If you're pro-life, this is my last comment. If you are pro-life, how much money do you want to have invested in companies that are involved in abortion? The answer is zero. If you're not pro-life, it doesn't matter. There are all kinds of great mutual funds out there that invest like they always have. But if you're pro-life or understand the damage pornography does to our culture mm. or uh, you don't want to uh, be invested in, in, in entertainment that's anti-family. Uh, if all of that bothers you, you're kind of stuck with us. Uh, so, but we do a pretty good job. And, you know, Patrice will attest to that. And maybe one of these podcasts, we can explain, you know, the, the quality of our board of trustees. It is, this is not just Art Alley making decisions. Art Alley doesn't make decisions. He follows what I believe Christ wants us to do. And the board is, uh, I mean, extremely supportive, but they certainly are not a bunch of yes men and women. I love it. I love it. So here, entrepreneurs uh, and Christy, who's watching from North Carolina, by the way, Christy, check it out and see, at least look at the evaluating where your funds are to see whether or not you unconsciously or without realizing funding the things that are, and, and that are hurting the very values that you stand for. So you saw this formula here. So obedience, uh, rooting your call and your business and your action to the word of God, no compromise, your compromise. Performance, bringing the best management team, best business practices around. If you combine those two together, success is inevitable. Or right, you just gave us a recipe for business success, man. Obedience plus performance, you know, Rooted to the word of God, no compromise, plus good management and leadership. That brings about performance. Here's what Art closes the book with, and I wanna, and then we're gonna wrap up. Have you been have you been called? What what have you been called to do? If you're watching this podcast, have you been called to think about investing differently? Have you been convicted about where your investment might be right now? Have you been called to launch a business or grow one from a kingdom perspective? What conviction must you pursue? Uh, or are you pursuing, no matter how difficult the challenge, we must not give up and we must not compromise no matter the cost. Remember, obedience trumps performance. Art, I'm gonna ask you to give a closing word of encouragement to entrepreneurs. Uh, by the way, Art, I wanna say thank you because what you're doing with us here in the podcast is more than just talking about biblical responsible investing, the investment, the invest, about biblical responsible investing or even investing with purpose, the book. 
we're getting a life lesson from an entrepreneur who's been successful. And all of us want to be successful. I know you don't like that term success, but we all want to. But many of us don't know how. And we want to do it right. And we just don't have models. We yeah. don't know that there's somebody next door like Art Ali, who's a man of faith and who's done it, been there, done that. We, we got to start looking out there for our role models and look at the kingdom. So thank you for that. You're giving us a, you're taking us behind the hood to help us understand how you did it so that we might be, also be successful as well. So our entrepreneurs are listening. There are some in America who are saying, wow, a Biden presidency may mean whatever, and they're scared and nervous. There are others around the world who may be concerned. Uh, we have the pandemic. Um, we, we have the economy. Uh, so what, how would you encourage them as they seek to be obedient, trusting God for the performance? Well, we have the direction book. Very clear. We don't pay as much attention to it as we should. But why I love Nehemiah is it solves another frustrating, you know, I'm probably a frustrated preacher, I don't know, <laughs> but it, 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 it solves another frustration of mine in that America has Christian uh, business people everywhere. But it, it, the problem is they're Christians on Sunday and they're business people the rest of the week. And that's a disconnect. Why I love Nehemiah so much is it takes willing, because God gave us free will. We can just say, ah, that doesn't matter to me. But if you are sincere in following him, what uh, makes Nehemiah special is it converts true knowledge of the word of God, Christian business people, into becoming biblical entrepreneurs. And we're only on this earth for a very short time. And while we're here, if we really do claim the name of Christian, we ought to start acting like it. And you can't act like it unless you are immersed in the word of God. And Nehemiah takes the word of God, incorporates it into the kind of business you're trying to do and shows you all the principles to become a biblical entrepreneur. If every Christian business person in America would go through the uh, Nehemiah course of uh, biblical entrepreneurship, America would turn around on a dime. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. The check is in the mail, man. What All right. Thanks, man. Well, it's true. I don't you know. Wow. Thank you so much. We're going to have Art back. When he comes back, Art, we're going to talk about your testimony and, and, and what's in the name. Your wife. Actually, we pulled her in for a chapter where we kind of got her take on this name, Timothy Plant, how it came about. So we're going to kind of go through that and then go with your testimony. Listen, if you want to um, hear our testimony, be on the lookout for the next podcast because we're going to kind of share how he came to faith. How does this conviction come about? That's also in the book. If you want to get your copy of the book, here's what Samantha says. Samantha says, thank you, Art, for sharing. Very encouraged and thank you for the truth that you reminded us today. Amen to that. If Thank you want to know more about the Timothy Plan or Art Alley, go to timothyplan.com, timothyplan.com. There you can learn about the evaluator. You can learn about how you can um, work with them in terms of your investment. Uh, you can also learn about where your particular investment are and how they're doing so that you might know what to do. Remember this, obedience trumps performance, but obedience does not mean no performance. Don't confuse the two, right? right? Don't confuse the two. With that said, if you want to know more about the Nehemiah Project, or you want to visit our website, nehemiahproject.org or nehemiahecommunity.com. There you can learn about our training program, Biblical Entrepreneurship, how we can come alongside you, work with you and growing your business. You can learn about our coaching program, where we come alongside you, coach you into growing your business. You can learn about access to capital, where we can provide, if you are truly kingdom, you're truly obedient, uh, we can come alongside you and provide capital. We just sent... Uh, about $70,000 capital to the country of Kenya to an entrepreneur. Wow. We're very excited about that because we want to make sure that you don't have to struggle like, like art struggled. We don't have millions, <laughs> but we definitely have a few. Also, you can remember how to join this community, one of the fastest growing Christian communities uh, in the world. With that, if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it.
share with friends, share with family, share with others so that they might be encouraged to know that obedience does trump performance. However, obedience does not mean no performance. Ultimately, there is performance. Even if you don't see in this side of glory, performance does come because our king wins in the end. All right, thank you so much. Well, all right, I'm gonna ask you today to pray for our, our, our viewers and listeners because um, as you pray for them, because obedience is not easy, all right? I mean, you you make it easy, man. You, you, you have not. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. So pray for, that God gives them the grace to be obedient as they seek to do so. Please pray for them. Uh, thank you, Patrice. God bless you. And Lord, we do thank you. Thank you that there are so many uh, you certainly have never wanted, needed, or used a, a majority to ever accomplish your will. We know that. But thank you that there is a remnant out there that, for lack of a better term, gets it. Uh, we pray you will break through to them. Uh, we pray that uh, they won't just um, uh, fly off on, on a, a, a tangent without having a rock-solid foundation based on your word. And that's the value of Nehemiah. They will. They will equip these people. And we just pray that this uh, podcast will have uh, encouraged or inspired some that are struggling. Life is a struggle. You told us that. You warned us that. But, Lord, the struggle is worth it. So we thank you. We just pray that uh, Patrice and, and Nehemiah will continue to have the impact worldwide that they've had. Uh, but uh, that's only because he, too, is obedient to what your word commands us to do. And it's not that difficult. Well, it's not easy, but it's not that difficult. All we do is follow your word and you will direct our path. So we thank you. We commit everything to you, including the United States of America and whatever you have in store for us. And we do it in Jesus name, amen. Amen. All right, thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. God bless oh, man. you. Thank you, my favorite uh, day of the year. <laughs> God bless. God bless.